Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss retroviruses. So let's go ahead and get started. You know, as far as viruses go, there are several different categories and types of viruses, but retroviruses are a specific type of RNA virus. And what makes them so unique is that they possess an enzyme by the name of reverse transcriptase. Typically, if you uh, if, if you look at molecules, and if a molecule ends with the letters A-S-E, it's some kind of enzyme, and, and that's what reverse transcriptase is. Now, in the name reverse transcriptase, you know, reverse means to go backwards, and when you hear the word transcriptase, perhaps you think of the process of transcription. So when we get into this video in a little bit, what you're going to see is the process of transcription going backwards. That'll be more clear when we get further into the video. So in my picture here, there's this red circle labeled reverse transcriptase, and there's other enzymes in the retrovirus as well. One very important enzyme is an enzyme called integrase, and you'll understand why it's called integrase later. Notice how there's also an outer envelope that surrounds the entire retrovirus, and also an inner capsid that surrounds the nucleic acid and the enzymes. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the steps that a retrovirus goes through in order to replicate. So you have the key in the upper left-hand corner so you know what everything is in my animation. So what ha uh, how this process begins is the retrovirus will attach and then enter into the host cell. So here comes our retrovirus, and it's just attached to the cell membrane of the host. The outer envelope of the retrovirus is a lipid a phospholipid bilayer. So the two fuse together. And as they fuse together, the retrovirus is taken into the host cell. Well, now watch, now watch what happens to the yellow capsid. The yellow capsid is dissolved and begins to break down. This releases the enzymes of the retrovirus and the RNA nucleic acid of the retrovirus. So the next step is going to be the process of reverse transcription. Now, normally when I hear the word transcription, I think of this. A DNA molecule is used to create an RNA molecule. However, retroviruses, because they have that enzyme called reverse transcriptase, are able to perform transcription in reverse. Reverse transcriptase will actually bind to the virus RNA and perform reverse transcription. The viral RNA will be used to build a molecule of viral DNA. And eventually the enzyme reverse transcriptase is degraded and broken down. But more importantly, the retrovirus has created viral DNA for itself. And you're going to see why that's important right now. So as we move on to the next step, the DNA of the virus that was just created will actually enter into the nucleus along with the enzyme called integrase. Now there's a reason I've drawn integrase to kind of look like a pair of scissors here to be symbolic of what it performs. Integrase will actually cut open the DNA of the host cell and it's called integrase because it helps to integrate the DNA of the virus into the DNA of the host cell. That's why it's called integrase. And what this creates is this combination of host cell DNA and viral DNA that is known as a provirus. And so now when we look at the next step, viral RNA will be created each time the host cell transcribes its DNA. So inside the host cell are enzymes that will direct the normal process of transcription, which is uh, using DNA to make a molecule of RNA. So in the nucleus, here's an enzyme that the cell possesses, and it will do normal transcription. Notice what it did, though. It made a copy of not cell RNA. It made a copy of viral RNA. And so this happens many, many times. 
And here we have another copy of viral RNA being created. And I think I have five of them in my animation. So there's a third one. And here's a fourth copy of viral RNA being made. And lastly, a fifth copy of viral RNA being made through the normal transcription process. And so now what happens is we're going to see the purpose of making all this viral RNA. Keep in mind, in the cytoplasm of a cell, cells possess ribosomes. Now, they possess many ribosomes. I'm just showing one here for simplicity. So what happens is the viral RNA attaches to a ribosome. And through the process of translation, the ribosome will read the viral RNA and create viral proteins viral proteins such as reverse transcriptase as the process of as this process continues the ribosome will continue to read other viral rnas and create integrase the viral protein called integrase and so if you see what's happening the cell's own ribosomes are creating parts for new viruses and as this process continues the ribosome also creates the capsid of a virus. The capsid of a virus is simply made from protein, and that's what the ribosome builds. The ribosome builds proteins. It just so happens that the proteins belong to viruses instead of uh, important parts needed by our cells to survive. And so eventually these viral proteins that the cell's own ribosome created will self-assemble into immature viruses. So here we have the viral proteins self-assembling into retroviruses, into new immature retroviruses. And eventually these, uh, these immature viruses are released through the cell membrane. So notice how the cell membrane has began to bud out. And as the process continues, the cell membrane continues to bud out and bulge out until eventually, there you go, a retrovirus has been released. Now, the same thing will happen with the other two retroviruses in the cell. Um, but this is how new viruses are created that will then be released to repeat the cycle. Eventually, these immature viruses will go through a series of, of chemical changes to become mature, but then they'll be able to repeat the cycle and infect other cells. If we finish this video with a quick summary of what we've learned, here's a retrovirus entering its genetic material into a host cell. And then the, uh, the process of reverse transcription is performed to make DNA of the, the, of the retrovirus. That viral DNA is then integrated into the, the host cell's DNA, into the genome of the host cell. This process will then direct the duplication and the creation of a whole bunch of viral RNA and viral proteins. The viral RNA and proteins will self-assemble into new retroviruses that will be released. So this is the cycle of how a retrovirus replicates. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, thank you for watching and place your comments in the box below. I'd like to hear what you think.